Hello, this is Mr. Couple, and this is Fizzer number 18, Diffraction and Refraction, from the Wave Properties Unit, page number 4. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing the basics of the two wave properties known as diffraction and refraction. We will not be going into much depth regarding these topics, simply we'll be learning how to identify whether a given phenomenon is an example of diffraction or refraction. Particles and waves behave differently. If we're talking about wave properties, we wish to discuss the behaviors of waves that are different and distinguish them from particles. First, let's consider a row of particles that are heading towards a barrier. When a row of particles hit the barrier, they reflect back, leaving a shadow area behind the barrier where no particles reach. This is simply the application of Newton's laws of motion. An object in motion remains in motion unless a force acts upon it. The particles above the barrier continue to move, but the particles below the barrier had a force exerted on them by the barrier, and so they bounced off the barrier. Since there are no forces acting on the particles in the top, their path cannot change, they must continue straight. We do not find any particles on the opposite end of the barrier. There is a shadow region where no particles are able to reach. This, however, is not the way that waves behave. Waves behave differently. When a wave hits a barrier, we see the same reflection, but notice that the wave is actually able to bend around the barrier. When a wave hits a barrier, part of it reflects back, but the other part of the wave is actually able to bend behind the barrier. Here we see energy from this wave found on the opposite end of the barrier. This behavior of waves is completely unique and is not exhibited by particles. We call this property of waves diffraction. Diffraction is the bending of a wave around a barrier or through an opening. You've experienced this in your everyday life. If you've ever been driving down a mountain and the radio signal cuts out. But then you drive a little bit further down the mountain and it comes back in again. When you first started going down the mountain, you were in the shadow region of the wave. But as you went further, the wave was able to spread around the mountain and then you were able to pick up the radio station again. Diffraction is a very interesting property of waves. It shows that waves are sneaky. They're actually able to go around and behind obstacles that a particle would have normally been blocked by. Here's a video of diffraction. This is a wave table. So these are water waves. As you see, waves sent towards this slit, this opening, are able to actually bend out and spread out on the opposite end of the barrier. Wave energy appears behind the barrier, and this is called diffraction. Let's look at this from a different perspective with a circular barrier. The wave is coming in from the left-hand side and it hits the barrier. Notice that the top and the bottom of the barrier actually serve as a point source for new waves. So it's not so much that the wave is bending around it as much as it's reflecting off the barrier and then these waves are then spreading out from that point of reflection. We see just as before shadow region behind the barrier. Notice that as they spread out the wave from the top of the barrier and the bottom of the barrier actually interfere with each other. So, by diffraction, a wave can actually interfere with itself. Notice on the right-hand side of this image, we see bright spots and dark spots. The bright spots are areas of constructive interference, where the dark spots are areas of destructive interference. I demonstrated this in class by using a red laser and a piece of my hair. The hair was the barrier. When I shine the laser at my hair, we got a pattern of something like this we see the light is being spread out with places of brightness and places of darkness. The bright spots are constructive interference, the dark spots are the destructive interference. Also, when we did this lesson in class, I passed out a diffraction grading to all the students. The diffraction grading is actually thousands and thousands of little teeny tiny lines which serve to diffract the light when it passes through it. And when you hold the diffraction grating up to a light and you look through it, you actually see an image that looks something like this. You see rainbows. 
the light as it passes through the diffraction grating diffracts around the lines and actually spreads out the white light into all the colors of the rainbow. This happens because the different wavelengths of light bend differently. The bigger wavelengths diffract more and the shorter wavelengths diffract less. Here in this image you can see the red light has bent more than the blue light. The amount of diffraction actually depends on the wavelength. The bigger the wavelength, the more the diffraction. Here's a picture of the diffraction of light around a razor blade. You can see that the edges of the razor blade are not distinct, that the light is actually bending around the razor blade. We have this red glow along the edges of the blade. That light shouldn't be there. In addition, we also see the interference pattern of bright spots and dark spots created along the edges of the razor blade. And this is diffraction. It's when waves bend around a barrier or through an opening. Question, is this diffraction? Here you see a glass marble on the left hand side and the sunlight is passing through it and the light is bending and the background is flipped upside down and inverted. The same thing is occurring on the right hand side with a glass of water. Is this an example of diffraction? And justify your answer. Remember, diffraction is the bending of a wave through an opening or around a barrier. In this case, glass and water are not barriers for light. So rather than bending around the barrier, the wave actually bends through it. This is not diffraction. This is something different. Here's two more examples. We see a ladder, normally which should be straight, looks bent for the part of the ladder that's underneath water. When the light from the ladder reaches our eyes, if it only travels through air, then the ladder looks correct. But when the light travels from water into air, when it changes mediums, the ladder ends up looking bent. We see the same thing in the right hand image with the diagonal black and white lines in the background. When we look through the water, the lines look curved and bent. This bending of the wave occurs not because the wave is going around the barrier, but rather that it's going through the barrier, that it's changing mediums. Here's a really cool picture showing this property of waves. This picture was taken during a solar eclipse in which the moon passes in front of the sun. The photographer was lucky enough to take the picture at the exact right moment when an airline jet was passing by. You can see the bending of the light from the sun in the exhaust of the airplane. When the light passed from the cold air in the atmosphere to the warm air of the exhaust, the light was bent and we actually see light from the sun appearing in front of the dark moon. This property of waves is called refraction. Simply put, refraction is the bending of a wave when it passes from one medium into another. Remember, this is different from diffraction because in diffraction the wave bends around the barrier, in refraction it bends through it. Diffraction takes place in one medium, Refraction is when the wave changes mediums. Refraction can lead to all sorts of really interesting and cool optical illusions, and now we'll look at a few of them. When the pencil is placed into the beaker of water, the pencil for a moment looks broken. But when we pull the pencil out, we notice it's clearly not broken. So the question is, why does the pencil look broken? What's causing this to happen? The pencil placed in a glass of water looks broken because the light from the pencil is refracted by the water. In order to see the pencil, light needs to bounce off the pencil and reach our eyes. And in this case, the light that's reflected off the pencil actually changes mediums from water into air. And when this occurs, the light bends. This is refraction. Let's look at another refraction illusion. This one's called the floating coin illusion. So you place a quarter at the bottom of a bowl and you take a few steps back until the quarter is hidden by the bowl. And now we can actually make the quarter visible, not by moving forward again, but by pouring water into the bowl. And when we do this, the quarter will appear. 
Now it looks like the quarter is floating, but we all know that the quarter hasn't moved. Quarters don't float on water. The quarter is still at the bottom of the bowl. But what the heck? How are we able to see it? Isn't that quarter at the bottom of the bowl? Why did the quarter suddenly become visible? Refraction can be understood by using the principle of least time, which states that when light travels between two points, it will always travel along the path of least time. The question is, which of these paths, A, B, or C, is the path of least time? Remember, the speed of light in water is much slower than it is in air. The path of least time is the path along which the light will reach the eye first. And since light travels slower in water, the path of least time is actually path C. Let's look at that one more time. Notice that while the light was in the water, it goes slow. And when it reaches out to the air, it speeds up. So path C is actually the least time, even though it has a greater distance than path B. Path C is the path of least time because the light was able to emerge from the water sooner and then travel quickly through the air and reach the eye. So this is why refraction occurs. It's because the path of least time bends since the wave speed in each medium is different. Refraction only occurs when the medium changes because it requires a change in speed which then optimizes the path into this bent shape. So let's look back at the floating coin illusion. When the bowl was empty and the quarter was at the bottom of the bowl, the light from the coin was blocked by the edge of the bowl and it was unable to reach our eye. However, when the bowl was filled with water, the path of least time now bends. And now the light from the coin is visible to our eye. It's able to reach our eye. Our brain simply traces this path back and forms an image at this location. This image is called a virtual image because it's not the actual location of the coin. The coin is actually at the bottom of the bowl. This is simply the place where our brain thinks the coin is, hence the floating coin illusion. Much like diffraction, refraction also causes white light to bend out into all the colors of the rainbow. And this is because every wavelength of light, each color of light, bends differently. From this animation, you can see that the red light bends the least when it changes mediums, whereas purple light bends the most. This ends up causing the white light to spread out into all the colors of the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Since the light is changing mediums, this is refraction. Remember, refraction is when a wave bends due to a change in medium. That's it for this lesson. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This has been Mr. Keppel, and I'll see you in class.